Hello folks and welcome to a video lecture on the evolution of populations. It's a common misconception that individual organisms evolve. You must understand and be able to explain why evolution happens to populations and can only be measured after generations within that population. What is true is that natural selection works on individuals and leads to reproductive success. Something we in Darwin call relative fitness. As the environment creates situations that require certain individuals in a population to struggle, it can limit an individual from reproducing and passing its genes on to the next generation. Presumably, individuals that have a favorable variation would be more successful at passing on their genes to the next generation. That variation that enabled the previous generation to be successful breeders would be more prevalent in the next generation. The change can often be seen in the phenotype. But the change occurs at the gene level, particularly in the frequency of alleles. Microevolution is a change in the allele frequencies in a population over generations. Natural selection can only act on a variation that has a genetic component. This genetic variation must be present before the selective pressure acts on the population. Alleles, alternate forms of a gene, are created through mutation in the genetic code. Sometimes these alternate alleles create an alternate phenotype. You must know that mutations are random changes in the genetic code. You may want to review mutations if you're uncertain as to how a single change, addition or deletion in one nucleotide can alter the expression of a gene. All that is needed to make an allele of a gene is a change in one nucleotide. Many mutations are detrimental to the organism and so the organism dies during development and never has a chance to pass that mutation on to the next generation. But mutations are responsible for variations in phenotypes, and only a variation that is heritable can be acted upon by natural selection. These genetic variations can be determined by one set of alleles, in which case we refer to them as discrete characters. For example, in pea plants, one set of alleles is responsible for either purple or white flowers. Genetic variation can also be present in multiple alleles, that is, two or more sets. These are called quantitative factors. An example of this is the many alleles responsible for human skin color. So a population must have gene variability in order to evolve. Discrete and quantitative measures can be measured in a population. One measure is the average heterozygosity, that is, the average percentage of alleles existing in a population. It's called average heterozygosity because the alleles are alternate forms of a gene. The prefix hetero, as you know, means different. For example, the wild fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, is heterozygous for 1,920 of its 13,700 gene loci. This is an average heterozygosity of 14%. And 14% is ample variation for natural selection to work with. In fact, a heterozygosity of 1% is enough for natural selection to work on. Variation between two separate populations can be measured as well and is referred to as geographic variation. That is, the differences in genetic variation between two or more separate populations. This can be observed in many situations. Here, for example, is a particular species of salamander in California, the genus Incentina species Eschotzii, divided into seven subspecies shown here. Hybridized subspecies of Eschotzii have produced variations in proteins and DNA and obviously phenotypes. This type of graded variation in characteristics that occur geographically is called a cline. Presumably, this cline may have been produced by some selective pressures such as camouflage. 
the different terrain in the salamander environment may favor a specific phenotype and make it less likely to be detected by predators. Or other mechanisms can change allele frequencies, such as genetic drift. Genetic drift is when a chance event can change allele frequencies, especially in small populations. Something known as the bottleneck effect can occur when a sudden change in the environment can drastically reduce the size of the population by chance alone. The new population is left to rebuild with the gene pool it has available. So named because the population passed through a bottleneck and reduces its size. Another form of genetic drift called the founder effect can occur when a few individuals become isolated from a larger population. This smaller group may establish a new population whose gene pool differs from the source population. This is what is presumed to have happened with many different island species that are found only on the islands of their discovery. The Galapagos finches are a fine example of species established by the founder effect. Genetic drift is a mechanism for the change in genetic variation and those changes can be summarized with four points. Its effect is significant on small population where there may be very few alleles to begin with. Chance events can eliminate, eliminate those alleles. Changes in allele frequency can fluctuate from year to year as the environment fluctuates. Genetic drift can lead to a loss of genetic variation within populations and as a result can limit the ability of that population to adapt to a change in the environment. And finally, it can cause harmful alleles to be the only alleles left to pass on, in a, in a sense, fixing those alleles in the population. Natural selection and genetic drift are not the only phenomena that can affect ge genetic variation or what we call allele frequencies. The transfer of alleles into or out of a population due to immigration or emigration of, the, of reproducing individuals can do it as well. This is called gene flow and happens between neighboring populations. This can increase the genetic variation of a population and improve its ability to adapt. Gene flow tends to reduce differences between populations over time and gene flow is more likely than mutation to alter allele frequencies directly. So to summarize, we define evolution as a change in allele frequency or change in the gene pool. A gene pool is a collection of all the available genes in a population over generations. Mutations are the source of alleles. Events such as natural selection, genetic drift, and gene flow can change the frequency of those alleles in a population. Of these, only natural selection favors alleles or variations that make the population better suited to its environment. So how can we develop an experiment to determine if a particular species is evolving? Well, we need a way of measuring changes in the percentage of alleles in that population. At the turn of the century, two scientists independently came up with a way to do so. It's called the Hardy-Weinberg equation. And it's actually quite simple. However, you've had enough to think about already. I'll let that sink in for a while. If you have any questions, be sure to write them down and bring them to class so that we can discuss them. Until then, be well. Thank you.